What's up guys, this is Joe from Analog Archive, back with another vinyl video. Today's video is going to be another contribution to the Blue Note 1500 series project that was started by Steven uh, at the In The Bass Clef. Um, I've made quite a few videos for this 1500 series project that he started and uh, I'm really kind of honored to be able to con continue to show many of the albums uh, that I have from the 1500 series that um, that he's needed filled, so I really appreciate that. Um, I think this will be my last contribution for the 1500 series project as we kind of get to the end. Um, and this one is Blue Note 1596. This is Blue Lights Volume 1 by Kenny Burrell. There is also a Volume 2, which is 1597. Uh, this was recorded May 14th, 1958 at Manhattan Towers. So this was not recorded at Hackensack, so Rudy Van Gelder's studio. This was recorded by Van Gelder, but he used Manhattan Towers as an alternate venue when he had a larger ensemble that he was recording. So in this case, there are eight musicians on this. Now every track does not feature all eight, and this goes for both volume one and volume two, um, but the fact that he wasn't gonna be able to fit eight musicians into his parents' living room. Because um, again, still at the time he was at Hackensack, he didn't have his studio at Englewood Cliffs until the following, I think it was um, like July of 59. So it was over a year later before he had his own studio. Um, but um, he used that the, this alternate location in New York City, not only to be able to record the larger ensembles. Uh, he uses that same studio, or sorry, that same venue for uh, the sermon uh, by Jimmy Smith. So uh, this was the fourth album that Kenny Burrell recorded as a leader, including uh, his the one that was previous to this. I think it was 15, somewhere in the 1570s. I actually did show that one. I just can't remember exactly what it was, but it was the co-led session with John Jenkins. Um, and that was that's an excellent album as well. But uh, this was his fourth album uh, as a leader for Blue Note, and he would continue on. He did appear as a sideman on a few albums as well in between some of the other ones. Um, but this is a great... Uh, one to kind of continue his uh, his recording for Blue Note as a leader. Uh, this has a very interesting lineup in terms of it's got a lot of really excellent players. Really, every instrument is represented by an excellent player, but it's got a mix of uh, musicians that would go on to have a more prolific career, whether in a group um, like Junior Cook, he'd end up going on to work with uh, Horace Silver and be part of Horace Silver's quintet on countless albums starting uh, I believe in the next yeah the next year like nine, maybe late 58 early 59 and he'd go on to be on uh, albums with Horace Silver for many years after that um, but you got like Lewis Smith who had two albums at, um, as a leader for Blue Note uh, but then he would kind of disappear and would uh, have a few albums in the, in the 70s. He had an album on Steeplechase, a great late 70s album on Steeplechase, but didn't really have a very uh, prolific career. You know, Tina Brooks was one of those unfortunate musicians who um, around this time would have a few albums. I think he recorded maybe four or five albums for Blue Note as a leader. I think only one of them was released in the time uh, that he was alive. He died in the 70s, but um, only one of his albums was released. It wasn't until the late 70s when the rest of his sessions uh, were released. And then even uh, one of his more recent tone poets from the beginning of the year, The Waiting Game, wasn't released on vinyl until uh, this year. So. Um, the fact that he unfortunately had not a not so great career um, for whatever reason. Again, he was another excellent player. But the rest of the players, Kenny Burrell, very prolific career. Duke Jordan, Bobby Timmons, both of them 
had great uh, career. Sam Jones, solid person on the bass. And then finally, Art Blakey on the drums. Obviously, one of the best drummers uh, in terms of jazz and really of all times. Uh, there are four tracks that appear on the volume one, two on the A side, two on the B side. And uh, you've got kind of a mixed lineup between them. The first two tracks have Lewis Smith on trumpet, Tina Brooks on Tina Brooks and Junior Cook both on tenor sax, Kenny Burrell on the guitar, Duke Jordan plays the piano on those, Sam Jones on the bass, Art Blakey on the drums. The opening song on the B side is just a quartet, so it just says Kenny Burrell, Bobby Timmons now, Sam Jones and Art Blakey. And then the final track on the B-side uh, expands again. You've got Lewis Smith, Junior Cook, Tina Brooks, Kenny Burrell, Bobby Timmons, Sam Jones, Art Blakey. So really aside from the one track, um, the first track on the B-side, the lineup is essentially the same, just flipping out who's playing the piano. So um, the first track is called Yes Baby, and that is the only track... Um, that's, or sorry, that's the, um, the one track that Kenny Burrell uh, composed. That is a slower to mid-tempo, bluesy track. Kenny Burrell is excellent on the guitar on that one with his solo. Um, Tina Brooks comes right in after that and just lays it out with a really, really soulful blues, bluesy solo as well. Picks up the pace as well, kind of the tempo, um, and just an excellent playing. Uh, on his, on his part and then Lewis Smith comes in and it's just um, a totally different sound uh, picks up the tempo a lot more and really uh, spotlights his excellent trumpet playing um, that's he's kind of the standout on that track you then get to the second song on the A side which is called Scotch Blues that is a Duke Jordan composition um, and that one is uh, starts out with a little bit cheesier of a melody. Uh, it's kind of just not not so great. Um, and then, but when the solos start, Kenny Burrell starts, and the just the tempo, but the feel of the track changes as well, and it becomes more just standard hard bop. Um, you didn't really know. I at least when I was listening to it, it you didn't really know where the track was going at first, but. Um, once the solos start, it, it really uh, kind of gets into its its space and um, is just really great overall. And Kenny Burrell knew exactly what he was doing on that track. Just very precise, very emphasized playing on his part. Um, Tina Brooks comes in as well uh, after that and just has an excellent uh, solo just to continue on the, the playing of... of Kenny Burrell. You then get into uh, Junior Cook, who continues it on, and really his solo on that is it's different than Tina Brooks. It's it's very interesting throughout this album to hear the contrast between the two tenor players. But with Junior Cook, he takes a little bit more of a um, kind of. Uh, softer a little bit softer of approach it's not as flashy as tina brooks um, one of the things that tina brooks always kind of had was his ability to um to really let his emotions take over his playing and with junior cook you're not hearing that really as much it's more um kind of controlled um and, and but still great overall for that and uh just a great kind of way to, to end the solos on that track. Um, and, and Art Blakey does have a short solo at the end of that drum solo. You then get to the B-side. The opening track is uh, Autumn in New York, which was a track that was featured on um, that uh, Andy just talked about, Next Play Records, 1595. Uh, something else, Kenny Burrell, or not Kenny Burrell, uh, Cannonball Adderley. Um, a very famous standard one that was recorded pretty prolifically in the 1500 series and continued to be recorded after this album as well. 
but that is the ballad for the album. Um, that's also when the uh, the personnel changes to just the quartet with just Kenny Burrell, Bobby Timmons, Sam Jones, and Art Blakey. So you get a much more uh, intimate feel to it. Kenny Burrell is the only one that solos on that as well, um, with the rest of them just kind of acting as uh, backing. And then the closing track is called is a Caravan, which is another standard, uh, Duke Ellington and uh, Juan Teisel um, standard as well. The pace is a little bit more uh, emphasized with that one a little bit quicker. Starts out with a Latin feel to it um, with Art Blakey uh, kind of using his drums to, to give you that kind of Latin feel to it. Uh, when you get to the solos, that drops off a bit. You do hear that a little bit still with Sam Jones, um, Sam Jones' bass, but for the most part, that kind of gets you get away from that Latin feel. Um, Lewis Smith starts the solos, and he just comes right out the gate with very electric, very loud um, solo, really hitting that high higher register of the trumpet pretty quickly and, and interweaving between uh, those lower and higher notes, um, which just was excellent. He was really the standout, not only in that track, but just a few minutes ago, I was talking about the fact that he really stood out on the album overall. So just, he was a great addition to this album, really making it uh, kind of prove to those that maybe weren't as familiar with him that he, uh, he, he belonged with that group, with these other great musicians. So... Um, you then get, uh, Tina Brooks comes in, um, and with that, um, just really solid solos, both Junior Cook and Tina Brooks going kind of back. I think it was back to back on that one. Um, yeah, Junior Cook's is, is first and then Tina Brooks. So kind of hearing as it transitions from, uh, Junior Cook to Tina Brooks, uh, again, hearing more of that uh, more, I wouldn't say safer, but just not as much uh, f kind of flash to Junior Cook's playing. And then when you get to Tina Brook, very emotional, very in-your-face kind of playing. Um, Kenny Burrell then comes in as the last front man um, to solo. And uh, just excellent as well. Very consistent on this album. And I love really hearing albums that have guitars on it. Now, obviously, this is Kenny Burrell's album, so you're going to hear a lot of him on this. But it's great to hear the horns and then hear the guitar after that. A very different sound, but um, really all comes together very well. Um, and that's really just a great uh, kind of kudos to, to the musicians, to being able to even though they have different styles, being able to put all that together and to make it sound great. Um, and then Art Blakey ends the track with uh, another drum solo, a very classic Art Blakey solo, using his entire kit and then uh, transitioning very well back into the melody and then that being the end of the, uh, the track and the album itself. So overall, a great album. Um, Mostly for the for the most part, uh, the four tracks are a little bit slower tempo. Nothing really moves very quick. Caravan probably has the fastest tempo, but even then, um, it isn't like a blowing session or anything like that. So, um, but it's a nice nice sound, nice later night uh, album as well. So um, that's one thing. Uh, I got this. Actually, from a fellow YouTuber, uh, Ken, Ken McAuliffe, jazz vinyl, audiophile. Um, he was doing an auction. He was selling some albums back in April, and this was one of the ones. So this is the copy that I have is the 1970 Liberty UA transition label. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't have the Van Gelder stamps. It says on the back, uh, it's got that that warning like you see on a lot of the some of the um, albums around this time the one that says it's been re-recorded to simulate stereo 
Um, but listening to this, it sounds great. Doesn't have, again, doesn't have the stamps, but sounds great. Would love to find volume two. Um, this is one of probably the hardest Kenny Burrell album to find. I already talked a little bit at the beginning about this cover, great Andy Warhol image. Uh, this isn't the first time that a Kenny Burrell album has that. I believe 15, I think it's 1543 or somewhere in the 1540s. His second album that's just called Kenny Burrell has another uh, Andy Warhol cover to it. So, um, again, thank you to Stephen and the Bass Clef for allowing me to continue to be a part of this series. I'll be back shortly, probably in the next week or so for uh, some vinyl finds. I've um, got a lot kind of stacking up, um, some great things that have just come in. So I'm um, excited to kind of show you guys what I've gotten. Um, but until next time, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please think about liking and subscribing. And I will see you in the next vinyl video. Bye.